Welcome to another game day. In today's video, we'll take a deep dive into how Star Citizen scales with different CPU core counts. And we'll be using the most powerful CPU, the 13900K at 5.8 gigahertz for all cores. And we'll be using the best GPU currently on the market, which is the 4090 overclocked as well. We're gonna have four RAM sticks, which gives us 32 gigabytes and the RAM sticks are clocked to 4,100 megahertz with manually tuned secondary and tertiary timings. The reason why this is important is because Star Citizen is one of the only games out there that will scale based on the amount of CPU cores and threads you have. So whether you have eight threads or 16 threads, it will utilize all of them at any given time. However, Star Citizen has essentially two main threads that hinders the performance. And this is the main thread and the render thread. The main thread will do a lot of the background calculations such as the position of players and the main updates that it needs to calculate at any given time. And the render thread is essentially the information that is being sent to the GPU to render. Now in the back end, there are basically worker units. These are the ones that are updating a lot of the game passes. These ones will scale based on how many cores and threads you have at any given time. And as always, we're using the Lorville run for this test. Each setup, we did three runs to get the average. So this took me a lot of time uh, to get these results for you. But this is as accurate as you can get when you want to benchmark Star Citizen and a multiplayer game. Uh, so what you're seeing here are the results. So we obviously have to run the 1300K with the minimum recommended specs, which is a four core CPU. Now, this is not any realistic result that you will see as most modern CPUs today are, you know, six cores and above, and in some cases, four cores and four threads. So we're giving you a full overview here of what performance you can expect. Now, what's interesting with this result is how the six cores and six hyper threads enabled 12 threads compared to the eight core with zero hyper threading on. You can see that, you know, it's, it's pretty much within the margin of error, right? It's indicating that Star Citizen is taking advantage of more than eight threads here. And this is why the six core and six threads setup is performing so well. But it's when we go to those eight cores and eight threads, we're seeing a very, very good performance here. This made me think and ask myself, well, what performance would we get if we included, you know, if we were running a setup with 3,600 megahertz, how important is, you know, the RAM really? So by including the results from our previous video, when we ran the eight cores enabled only with no hyper threading and we had 3,600 megahertz with the plug and play XMP, What's really surprising and interesting is that this setup is almost as good as running the 3900K with four cores and hyper threading enabled, right? With eight threads. The performance is very similar and it just shows you that the real benefit and, and, and how Star Citizen is built is really loving, you know, faster RAM. So taking a look at this, Star Citizen seems to scale more with RAM. And for me to kind of validate this, I went a step further and did another run when we had eight cores and eight threads of hyperthreading enabled just to kind of compare and see how the 3600 megahertz will compare against the, this current result is that even by enabling hyperthreading on the 3600 megahertz we're actually seeing that the minimums are virtually the same margin of error obviously the average is increasing a little bit here but it seems like the 3006 megahertz is currently bottlenecking the 3900K by a factor of over 20%. This is really, really interesting here to see how much is being bottlenecked. And I wanna dig a little bit deeper into why that is. So if we take a look at the CPU utilization throughout these benchmarks, we can actually see that it looks like even the 4,100 megahertz CL16 tuned seems to be even be bottlenecking the eight cores with hybrid threading enabled of the 3900K. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if we can get our RAM at higher speed or if there's another RAM setup we can uh, get to improve the performance. And the question is, how will this perform with DDR5, which can go up to 8,000 megahertz and above? Uh, would Star Citizen benefit from that? But game day, what about uh, the E cores? If you've read online, like most people have, who have the 12,000 series and 13,000 series and running Star Citizen, you will see that by having the E cores enabled, that you're getting terrible starting performance. Now, this is what it says online, but let me show you the actual results and how bad it really is. So, if you're running an, an eight cores with hyper threading disabled and enabled eight E cores, 
It is not even better than 8 cores and hyperthreading enable. It's just complete trash, garbage. It's just terrible. You can see here it has a worse stutter. The performance was absolutely disgusting, was unplayable. And even going full house, 8 cores, 8 thread, and 16 8 cores, it did improve the overall minimum, but the stuttering is the worst across the board. You might as well just run you know, a 4 core setup here because this is absolutely trash and garbage. Once again, the rule or recommendation out there is if you have one of those systems with E cores, just disable them. But once again, you need to have hyperthreading enabled because it does benefit your system. And when it comes to Ryzen, that's probably the same thing there. The SMTs should be enabled with the patch 3.17. We will test this again on 3.18 uh, to see if the hyperthreading will benefit uh, the future patch. And we keep looking at any given time with the new updates with Vulkan, if those E cores will be useful or if the Windows scheduling can improve the performance overall. But for now, expect that you can get the maximum performance by just running your uh, system without any E cores. So what's interesting with the result is that Star Citizen does scale very well with more threads and cores across the board. It seems to be more thread happy than core happy, which we saw with the six cores and six hyper threads enabled versus just eight cores. It seems to be leaning to more towards the thread count than the actual physical core count. But one thing that stood out the most was that, you know, once you go over specific threshold, adding more cores actually will not improve performance if your RAM speed is bottlenecking it. And what this shows is that the 3600 megahertz just doesn't have the bandwidth or latency to be able to feed the additional cores fast enough for it to generate more frames for the GPU. And if we do some napkin calculations, it's pretty much fair to say that even the 4100 megahertz tuned memory is most likely bottlenecking the 8 cores and 8 thread setup by a lot. And the reason why I say this is because if we think about a linear scaling of the four cores and four threads, we can assume here that if we were to have 100% you know, core to core scaling, we should see 150 frames on average here, right? So this tells me that the RAM is still bottlenecking the eight cores and eight hyper threads. There's more performance to be gained if we can tune the RAM further. And what this exercise has showed us is that even though Star Citizen loves multiple threads and cores, the memory just isn't fast enough to feed it. And um, what this really shows is that there's probably more performance to be captured by tuning the RAM further. I'll try to do that as well and do a new video if we can get the RAM beyond 4100 megahertz. And also the question will then become, what about DDR5? So with DDR5, you can expect some of the best systems to reach over 8,000 megahertz. And that means it would have a massive bandwidth advantage over DDR4. But currently DDR5 would have poorer latencies than what you would see with DDR4. So it will be interesting to see if Star Citizen is more of a bandwidth kind of game, if it benefits from there, or if it's just another case that it benefits from the lower latencies. But overall, it's, it's very clear here that whether you're adding eight cores, eight hyper threads, that if you don't have the memory speed to feed it, you are missing out. And it's not by a small margin, it's actually by a lot. We're talking about 20% difference here between the performances. And thank you so much for being able to come all the way to the end. In the next video, we'll take a deep dive into how Star Citizen scales with different CPU frequencies. And I wanna thank you so much in advance and do not forget to subscribe if you don't wanna miss the next video.